I'll just very briefly say hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde, welcome to Concordia University's Fourth Space. Thank you so much for joining us for Songs and Paintings by Brad Henry. We're so happy to have you here in the space with us and over Zoom. This event is co-organized by First People Studies School of Community and Public Affairs and Indigenous Directions here at Concordia University. So I think I'll just pass it over to Manon Tremblay, who's here with us in the space, to say a few words of official welcome to everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Anna. I, I was going to introduce Manon, so, so, so Sorry. that's fine. Uh, I'm, <laughs> hi, Nicola. Uh, hi. So, Ashkenonia uh, Ishes, when that Indy. So, my name is Nicola Renault. I'm an assistant professor in First People Studies. And I want to thank uh, Indigenous Directions and uh, Manon Tremblay for supporting this event and helping us uh, bringing uh, Brad Henry to, to Concordia. So uh, I'll let Manon say, say a word. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so yes, my name is Manon. I'm uh, the Senior Director of Indigenous Directions at Concordia. I'm also a member of the Muskeg Lake Cree Nation. And uh, it is. I'm going to have to read because, as I said, I'm a morning person and it's the afternoon and I'm just like, I'm fried right now. So, um, uh, so it is my great honor and privilege today to introduce to you um, our special guest, artist uh, Brad Henry. Brad was born in Whitehorse, Yukon, and he was raised in Vancouver. He is a Vuntuk Gwich'in and Inland Tlingit. I hope I said that right. Um, Brad has had a lifetime of exposure to and experience with Northwest Coast art and those of you who are here and I'm sure you can see behind me as well like all of this these nice uh, prints of, of his paintings. Um, so, you know, you can see that his artwork just strives to bring positive energy into the world and pass on the stories and beliefs of his Tlingit and Gwich'in ancestors. He uses acrylic on canvas, paper, walls or wood. And Brad also facilitates workshops and community murals to teach people about the diversity and commonalities amongst First Nations cultures across Turtle Island. Now, Brad is a man of many talents. I'm sure you can see there's a guitar. Um, he's off screen and he's holding uh, a drum. Uh, so he's also a musician and a singer songwriter and he's performed on CTV's Aboriginal Voices and APTN's The Mix, Buffalo Tracks and Aboriginal Arts and Entertainment. And Brad has also released two albums. His artwork can be found in museums and galleries all over the world. Would you please help me welcome Brad Henry? Thank you, Manon. Uh, so thank you for people who are here with us and uh, thank you for people joining us online. I just wanna announce briefly, uh, what uh, what we're gonna do today. So uh, Brad's gonna play three uh, of his songs. Well, we thought it would be nice to uh, create uh, an encounter with an indigenous music student at Concordia. So Emilio Wawati, Anishinaabe music student at University of Concordia uh, is gonna accompany Brad on uh, two of the songs. And after that, uh, Brad Henry will talk about his visual work, his, his painting, and about his culture. Uh, so I met Brad two years ago at Asinapka Festival in Ottawa. Uh, he did an opening song, and uh, I was moved by it. And I saw his visual work, um, and I liked it, meaning that I thought uh, I could learn things from him. So I'm happy that uh, he was going to Ottawa again uh, this week, and we could uh, find a way to uh, bring him here so he can share more of his work and culture and wisdom with us. So uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Brad. Hi, everybody. Brad Henry here. Um, I'm going to start by uh, doing a song that I wrote. It's the uh, drum song, and I don't speak Tlingit or Vantat, Gwich'in, and you know the reason for that, I won't get into it. This is not the time or place, but uh, we will start with this tune because I love it. It's about creation, creation 
The, there's an Alaska creationist story about the raven flying over the ocean, and he saw the seal, and he said to seal, caw, caw. Seal, I need some sand. Can you get me some sand from frog? So frog, a seal went down to the ocean's floor, saw frog, got some sand, gave it to the raven, and raven spit out the islands where we could, what we would call our earth, Southeast Alaska. But uh, I'm an inland Tlingit from my, my dad is from uh, Henry Island. It's about uh, 50 miles down the Teslin River. And there's three groups of us, uh, the Carcross, Atlin and uh, Teslin. But my dad is, they're from the bush. And uh, this song is about my parents. It's how they created us, and that's why that's why that's a correlation. on my drum wolf my mother uh, duck lady my dad okay. that takes a lot of juice out of a guy you know why it's because it's real so when you do stuff, give it all you got. The 
this dream seems so real, but it won't capture how you feel. And it can't catch you standing there, and it won't get your far away stare. And your soul. Far away, and your soul far from home, and your soul all alone. You know, sometimes. When I'm all alone and I'm walking down the avenue, surrounded by people all the time, and I'm still alone. Pretty girls everywhere. Your soul far away, and your soul far from home, and your soul. All That's the sound I like hear, you see? <clears throat> Usually a performer sings to themselves. Well, I do. I sing to myself. Then I hear the clap, then I go, oh, Jesus, that's great. <laughs> Love it. So this song here, I wrote for a, this girl I was in love with so long ago. Anyways, it's about, uh, she's a, a you know, back then, we I'll make the story short, but everybody was Plains Indians back then. <laughs> it's true, we all, we didn't know, you know. But uh, this is a Plains vibe to it, the Plains rhythm. Bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour, hello, hello. I remember two young teens listening to the stones and buffy. Having fun, hey, hey. sharing dreams. It took forever, the fight was wrong. I got up, honey, I got strong. What a beautiful face 
But hey, lady, you've always had your special grace. Dear friend forever, and in my clinket heart, you always have your special part. You'll always have your special part. You'll always have your special. There you have it. Okay, I better earn my money now. This is my favorite part, talking about uh, culture, which it took me forever to learn. And we're, we're always learning, always. And there's no experts on it, because there's no experts on art. This stuff I talk about, first of all, is, uh, is not mine. It's my people's. They invented this. I didn't. I interpret it, but I also got permission to do that. magic works. All right. Oh. Where is it? Show me, please. We're very informal here. Just pretend it's our living room. All hands on deck, we have confusion here. Which one? Sorry about that for the delay. Let's get down to uh, this one. It's called the killer whale. Um, This is one of the most beautiful paintings I've ever composed. I think it's important because uh, it represents community, family, teamwork. And also, I wanted to convey energy. So you can see the drag and the uh, energy bulging, bumping up at the front part. This is called an ovoid. There's an ovoid. That's a split U. That's a U. This is a split U. This is a long U that I manipulated. So uh, on the top is the dorsal, and it's a Yanyeti, a uh, 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 Dachluwedi. Dachluwedi is a killer whale, and also a eagle. They're the same. They're the same in my uh, my father's people's language. And this is a. Planes thing that I incorporated. Why, why would you think I would have four there? That's because uh, the people that looked after me when I was boozing it up and lost and everything, 
they taught me about their culture, their planes, their uh, different cultures, and they saved me from that with their culture. So I piggybacked on their culture for a long time till I learned a bit of my own. So this is northeast, southwest, white, yellow, red, and black because these people uh, smoked the pipe with me and uh, allowed me to uh, participate in their ceremonies. Where's the, where do I aim it? It's not moving. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do this manually. I'll just say next. <laughs> we're going to run out of time here. Just pretend it's a... Con there we go. <coughs> Where's the... Where's the stuff from my family? That's what I want to do first and foremost. Yeah, that's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, like this is, uh, uh, I didn't even talk about my family. And this is all about my family. Yeah. Okay, this is my parents. Now, whatever I do in this life, I attest to them. If I'm a decent guy or anything, I do good. This is what, this is why. Now, they're both, they both went to residential school. They had met at Carcross in the Yukon Territory. It's an Anglican uh, residential school. And uh, my mother's from Old Crow, Yukon, which is uh, almost in, the, it's, I think it's inside the Arctic Circle. Yeah, it's inside the Arctic Circle. And my dad's from, well, he's from John, uh, Johnson's Crossing, which is 63 miles out of uh, Whitehorse. Next, please. There's us. The reason I show you these pictures, I want you to make it clear that uh, this is how it was for us. We went to church, and uh, they followed the orders. They, they uh, you know, their, their parents were very strict as well. These are my brothers and sisters and my parents and the minister. Anyways, uh, that's how it was. Next, please. There's me as a kid. So this is in the 70s. I want to show you how we, that's about as Indian as I got back in the 70s. It was cool. We had long hair. We listened to Redbone. Buffy was our, our uh, the go-to. That's why I mentioned her in my song, because we used to just idolize her. She was all we had. Next, please. There's the family get-together. That's my grandmother. She was turning 90 there. So that's how they are in the present. Next. Here's my cousin Bert. I wanted to show you how, how uh, modern day people are in the bush. You know, they buy stuff at the store to supplement their hunting and whatever. That's my cousin Bert. He's half Tlingit and half Norwegian. And he's the go-to guy for me when it comes to going to the sticks. Like, he's got everything. Gas, all, and his, uh, his uh, boat is just amazing. He always takes people down there. He does community work. Like, he shows the youngsters about how to live off the, literally live off the land. Next, please. There's my, there's my nephew and his daughter. I just wanted to show them because that's how much he loves the, the, it's just, I just wanted to show you a portrait of love. And that's my nephew just loves his kids. Okay, next please. So this is uh, not how we dress all the time. This is ceremonial dress. Uh, as you see, there's some designs on there. This is Kokitan, this is Kokitan, this little baby girl. That's her clan. So you see these uh, uh, art? The eagle, there's uh, uh, Dachluedi, and that's a clan. So these people, she's got a Kokitan that she's a raven clan. This guy is a frog clan. Him, he's a wolf, Yan Yeti. So they have their emblems, you see? Just like, uh, what, is the, what is the emblem for the school here? Do you have one? It's a book? Well, it's the same thing these guys, 
these guys have their emblems and they work hard for them and they, they uh, the reason they wear those is it's like a team. When there's a community event, one team will, uh, will uh, sponsor it, meaning they'll do all the work for it. And, uh, and that's what the uh, community is all about. So that's what clan is. It's doing community work and uh, representing the clan. Next, please. That's uh, one carver's work. He was, uh, this is at the Clingit gathering in, uh, Te in Teslin uh, about five years ago. Next. There's a, uh, this is a Yan Yeti hat. Look at how beautiful the designs are. That's the ears. Can you see the ears in the mouth, the teeth, our shells? This is very uh, authentic Clingit clink art. And uh, the, the reason I say authentic, I don't like that word because we're all authentic, hopefully. But this guy followed the, the rules and stuck to them. I learned the rules and uh, disassembled them and made them more simple because I'm a simple type of a person in that regard. I don't like to figure out stuff. Okay, next, please. That's my cousin. And I just wanted to show you the uh, application of this work on some people just do like to, to dress like that if somebody's around that they just totally respect. So she, uh, she makes these. And she's from Johnson's Crossing too, so we're pretty close cousins. Our uh, grandmothers were sisters. Next, please. Okay, this is a raven. How can you tell the raven? Straight beak. And an eagle would have a hook. And uh, that's the uh, Dachluwedi clan. That's the highest clan that they have is the eagle. And we're very similar to the Haida. But as you can see, Clinket art is very uh, busy. They're not as busy as, uh, or a lot uh, busier than the Haida. That's uh, uh, Chief Sam Johnson there. Next, please. The reason I'm showing you this picture is because uh, it's salmon. We got salmon from uh, Atlin, BC, and these guys were blessing it. This guy here, and uh, this guy here, he's pretty much a spiritual guy, a spiritual go-to. He's a f famous uh, carver, his name is Wayne Carlick, and he's a Kokitan clan. So this uh, plane full, we we're having our gathering and you can't have a bunch of clinkets and no salmon. So that's what this is. So you see uh, everybody coming down there to, uh, to greet the salmon. And then they had a big feast after. We had a big feast after. Next, please. There's me showing off. That's a beautiful boat. They name their boats. I don't know the name of this one. I look like a tourist. Guilty. No. Next, please. So what's, what's he doing here? What do you think? Looking at it, admiring it? He's blessing it. Everything we get, we get uh, is a blessing, for lack of a better word. And I like that way of thought because uh, it takes work to get this fish, and that's what they did. They, these, these guys, uh, the uh, Kokatan people, he, he's a Kokatan because you can tell on his drum, is the raven. So Clinket, inland Clinket is a mixture of this style of... Uh, Flor, uh, floral art, as well as West Coast stuff. West, that's from Alaska. Next, please. There's a, those are our, our poles over there. So there's the five clans. Kokitan, Deshkitan, Yanyeri, Ishkitan, and Dakhlawedi Eagle. Cool, eh? That's our clans, and those are the colors that we use. Next, please. There's uh, Sam Johnson, the chief. There's one of our clan mothers. They're both sisters. Very strong woman there, I'm telling you. 
you don't want to uh, cross them. It's game over. So if you see my art, a lot of it is uh, really a lot of women in it, like when I paint uh, Grandmother Moon. It's a reason I was, I was brought up like that. That's how we were brought up in a clinket or vantat kitchen household. Uh, these women are very strong. I, it's probably like that in all Native communities, but uh, you know, we're brought up to respect and to uphold their laws and their uh, whatever they want. That's how it is. I mean, it changed a lot, but in our household, we're, we're, they're pretty strict. Okay, next, please. That's my cousin again, another cousin. She's a, uh, she's a, uh, Dachlawedi clan. You see this? She painted this, by the way. And that's a, see the killer whale in her hand? The rattle? That's Dachlawedi as well. So they're uh, the same. So they have the right to wear a killer whale or a eagle. And she made all that stuff there. And you can see the floral patterns. So it's almost like they're a mixture of Athapaskan and, uh, and uh, coast. You know, I was so crazy when I was a youngster. I had the nerve to question why they had West Coast stuff, because I used to, you know, young idiot, really. But uh, they straightened me out. My father straightened me out and told me where they're from and kind of gave me a little history lesson. And you can see on her head, that carved uh, headpiece. These guys are really, really good. Okay, next please. All right. I'm gonna show you some guys, of them, some of them in action. Can we play this video please? <laughs> They're asking for permission to come in. the picture. Um, I think they're very powerful when you when you're there in person because they're in unison and they're doing that for a reason. You know they're singing these songs for the creator and for uh, the other clans. They're making themselves known 
and asking for permission for permission to come into that uh, that uh, gathering there. That's part of our culture. So we're long longhouse people, and our culture is communal, and uh, we go by clans, like I had shown you the clans. So the way they interact is everything they do is reciprocal. One year the the wolf clan or we'll say it in english the wolf clan will uh, host and then the next year it could be another clan the eagles or uh, the uh, ravens and everybody chips in so it's like if there's a, a pot latch you know what that is it's another word for like a giveaway they're a very sophisticated thing and some of them take years and years to put together some people do pot latch after pot latch and it costs them so much. But the thing is there, from the culture there, is more about giving. So the more you give, the richer you are, rather than receiving, receiving, receiving. It's not about that. So it's about doing work for the community. Um, Nowadays, it's uh, it's becoming a really part of the community, whereas for a long time it was lost. When I was a boy, it was lost. I was a firefighter and I was happy to be a firefighter because we got to wear a uniform. And wearing the uniform made me more white, you know? This is a fact, this is not uh, rubbish. And I, there's a reason I tell you this. It's not out of... Uh, showing off or anything it's the reason is to tell you how it was but the good thing is that we survive and we thrive after walking through that sort of thing we we survive and then we thrive and we become who we're supposed to be which is a clinket in one that kitchen and uh it makes you proud because uh you're part of your community and you in a certain way you represent them <clears throat> I give you my word, if I do anything wrong in a, in, in a forum like this, uh, my people will tell me about it. They're very strict. Okay, next please. This is a commission I had done for uh, some woman. She, was, she got an, uh, an award for community work. But it's kind of like a joke because this is a woman bear. And she's pointing the way and there's a her partner doing the work to get her there. So in other words, she's the boss. So it's kind of like teamwork in a way too. And uh, this is an eagle head here. Next. This is straight up beauty. This when I uh, when I was telling you about uh art um some of it is really technically good this i find this is probably one of my favorite paintings i ever did not because it's 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 a composition it's very bare and it's beautiful i think it's beautiful it's my favorite there's grandmother moon very strong and big that's why i made it oversized to cover so much space. Then I wanted to show Mother Earth alive, so it's windy, and these two caribou. That's what we have up there. Like uh, we're very specific to certain things in our in our environment. Like we're a product of our environment, wherever we are, whichever native we are. Um, here, this is a, a mixture of my cultures because. My mother is Vantat Kutchen, which is people of the lakes, and my father is a Klinket, inland Klinket. So I put the two together and I came up with this. But uh, I love the composition of this. This is a, an S shape. This is called an ovoid. We use circles. There's a split U. So I love that painting. It's it's uh, it says it's simple and it gets the point across. It's like if you're writing a paper, you want it to be simple and clear. You don't want it full of words that don't mean anything. All right, next, please. 
Same with this painting. Simple, clear. I wanted to illustrate the, the humility of leadership. When these guys get tired, they fall back and let somebody else take over. That's a beautiful way to live. And here uh, you have Grandmother Moon giving them some light. There's the leader in the flanking. And there's the salmon head motif. And the reason we use a salmon is because uh, coastal people eat a lot of salmon. And hopefully it stays that way. Uh, that's our food fish, primarily sockeye. The, the problem is uh, commercial fisher people on, in uh, Alaska, primarily Tlingit uh, people, are overfishing, but you know they're, they're negotiating now to, to remedy that. So you do have, nothing is uh, perfect. You have politics, and it's a tough go. And when it comes to money and politics, it's, uh, that's, <clears throat> that's how it is in the Native community. It's not perfect, but they strive, hopefully. But I like this painting, so that's how clear I want everything to be in my brain. And I just paint what I can, what I know about. I, uh, I paint uh, ideas and uh, ideologies, personal and communal. And I use the clinket art to convey it because I'm good at it. Next, please. That's everything right here is the salmon. All the trees live from the salmon. All the animals live from the salmon. It fertilizes everything. They go to uh, all over the Pacific, they come back and then they lay their eggs and then they die. Again, here's the plains idea or the medicine wheel. I don't know who invented the medicine wheel, but here it is. And that's homage to the people that uh, really looked after me when I needed it. And I put a human face here. And the reason is the salmon is carrying us humans. We don't uh, govern the salmon, not by any chance. Nature carries us. And if we screw up, which we are, it's, uh, it's going to be devastating. This is the gill. And the reason I use this form, I wanted to make it really apparent this animal is going in the direction of up, it's climbing uh, a waterfall or something. And they're fighters. So that's what I wanted to convey. Movement, nothing is static for very long. Okay, next. So I do my research, that's why I showed you this. I think it's highly important to get your, your your forums and all these things, right? And they're this color in the boondocks. All right, get it? Got it? Perfect. Next, please. See where I, I use that? This painting here was a commission for the, uh, uh, a band out of Prince George. I can't pronounce their name. I don't speak their language. <laughs> This is salmon head motif. There's the mouth, the eye, and you'll see this everywhere. So the, these forms are a series of these S shapes, ovoids, fillers, U shapes, S shape, S shape. You see it? It's a formula, isn't it? The teeth are U shapes. The, the, uh, the head is a U shape. And these colors are uh, typical of uh, the West Coast. Now, a lot of people would think that uh, they, they used these colors alone because that was the rules. It wasn't so much it was the rules, is that they didn't have access to other colors. So they used red ochre, charcoal, and they used yellow too, but uh, that's urine from the goat. And they use turquoise blue green. Okay, next. Next. U, U, S, and ovoid. Pretty crude drawings, but uh, 
they'll have to work. Okay, next. There's an eagle in flight. When I composed this picture, I really wanted to convey the eagle reaching out. He's doing a ballet. No. He's reaching out. I wanted to say he's reaching out to see Grandmother Moon to get some advice. Because that's something I would do. Like I said, we're top heavy in terms of uh, uh, leadership with the woman and her family. I can only speak for us. So this is Dr. Luedi. There's a salmon, 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 salmon. Split U's. And you can always tell the eagle, Dr. Luedi, by the beak being curved and at a sharp point. Okay, next please. There's the uh, start of a uh, beaver. And this stuff here is called cross hatching. So all I did was uh, use a ruler and then uh, go across it. Next, please. There's the finished version. Next, please. There's the eagle again. These colors I dreamt. This color here, the blue. I had a, for lack of a better word, a vision. I, w I went to sleep and I woke up and uh, just when I was waking up, I dreamt of a volcano. And the volcano spat out fire and it was pitch black. So I painted the fire as a tongue and it became a perfect round ball and it went into the water and it became daylight and then the blue came out. So this is blue as water. This is a uh, wind spirit. Fire spirit and Mother Earth. That's the symbolism for the colors, for my personal colors. Next, please. Same, uh, almost the same eagle, but uh, traditional colors. Again, please. There's simplicity. This is what I like. This is what I thrive for when it comes to my art. I like simplicity again. It's a... Uh, stripped down version of the uh the raven so this raven i put a little curve on the beak but not too much i wanted some humor so i made the sun smiling he's saying get let me out of here so there's a uh story of the raven catching the sun this is just my take on it this is the tongue the nostril and the beak the eye is a salmon head motif. So here's a split U. And ovoid, 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 ovoid. See, all it is is a formula. It's like some kind of an alphabet. Okay, next, please. There's a bear that I was attempting. This is a not bad, you know. I'm not proud of it or anything. I just wanted to show you some mistakes. Um. I wanted to put a big hump on it because the grizzly bears are huge. And this color scheme I liked. And this is, uh, I wanted the belly to be round, so I used an ovoid as a filler. So it shows you what you used. And this is a filler. Next, please. There's a wolf. That's my mother's clan is wolf or matriarchal. There's Grandmother Moon, the wolf, talking to Grandmother Moon. And I'll always paint that because uh, we get our information our, and our direction a lot of times from our grandmothers. Like in the Tlingit culture and the Vantat, uh, you have the, the women are huge, huge influence. Next. Same, almost the same one, but uh, a bit different. That's with my colors, the ones that I paint specific. If you see this art somewhere, it's going to be my art with these colors. So that's kind of like a trademark sort of a thing. Next. This is standard uh, native issue. So you're always going to see, a, like a lot of natives, when they paint a wolf, they're always going to paint it with the moon, grandmother moon. So I wanted a nice tail, so I created that. I think this one's in the Louvre, or uh, the Met. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> Next. This is a, uh, this canvas here is important for me because uh, it shows day-to-day -day life and it's got a swirl. I had painted this with somebody and we used to paint together. So you have the little squirrel, you have the wind spirit blowing everybody, and you have these flowers. The reason we put the eagle and all these motifs and stuff in the flower and the little face on this uh, uh, grass and the bumblebee, the reason we did that is to show that it's valuable and it's alive. And they talk to us in a different way. And the, the raven is a joke because he's, ravens are tricksters and he's this one surveying his land, you know, thinks he's a big goon. Here's a, a, a salmon head motif on this flower. The reason that is to show that, uh, because like I said earlier, salmon is everything. This one is that important as well. Everything is important and everything has life. Okay, next please. So the reason I do stuff like this is for the pop factor. So it's got lots of, uh, it's stark, you know, the blue really comes out. Same with the red, the red comes out. That's a simple, simple composition. So it took a lot of work to get that simple though. It's like you sifting through a paper, right? Yeah, it's so great. And then you look at it again and it, uh, too much words. And then it sounds like you're writing for your prof or somebody. Okay, next. Same idea. I love this, it's simple and, and pretty. The salmon head motif in there again is to illustrate the importance of uh, plant life. Next. This I was experimenting with water. I was watering down my acrylics so they would be almost like watercolors. I like the effect, but it's very hard to get it uh, right. It's cool though, it's unpredictable and they're all one-offs when you do them. It's nice, eh? I did that for my sister, this one. Next. So this is a tree, this is to illustrate uh, community. So adolescents, they have a tendency to get along better than uh, grown-ups at first anyway. So these children are inside this tree, living and sharing. I like the uh, birds on top, because this uh, one little bird is totally dependent on, it, on its mother. And this owl is ready to tip over. And we added the, uh, this one here. Because you, why would you think we added the, this one? Anybody have an idea? Because of the color. But some people love these animals because they say it represents their relatives that passed over. I didn't know that. They, so you learn these things as you go, you know? And that's, uh, that's uh, everybody's uh, idea of the, the uh, cardinal. And, if I, and, and uh, for the Crees, there's a lot of cardinals out there and they just love this painting. And I'll get one, and they, you know, they, it's crazy. Next, please. This is a practical uh, application of some of the work. So you can see as I was in the process of it, you could see where I used the, uh, the ruler and everything, but I smoothed it out after. This is at an office in Vancouver, Vancouver Aboriginal Health Society. So I like doing work for people like that because then it, uh, it's doing something for the community. So their office is less uh, uh, uptight and less uh, businessy because their clientele have nothing. So I'm glad I can beautify their office. I don't do it for free, mind you, but uh, I'm contributing somehow, you know? 
And same with the art I'm contributing. I used to always wonder about what's my purpose in life? What am I doing? An artist? Seriously, I, I, like, I, I didn't know why I became an artist. My uncle told me I should be an artist. And uh, so I, you know, finally did it. And uh, I like what I've become. I have my place in this, uh, this world. Next, please. There's a uh, logo I made for Vancouver Aboriginal Health. Why do you think I put the medicine wheel on it? And I'm a Klingit, and it's a West Coast design, and it's a bear even. Why the bear? Anybody, don't be shy. We all must make mistakes everywhere. All right, no riddles here. There's a bear, and the reason is because a lot of people consider the bear a healer. So a lot of nations are, what clan are you? Bear clan. Bear clan. Anyways, so in, in a healing environment or a medical environment, I put the bear there because the bear is strong and it's healers, a lot of people say. Why the, the medicine wheel? Because downtown east side attracts a lot of everybody. Trees. In Canada, you're always going to say Cree because they're a huge tribe or people. And uh, so you get all the plains people, people from Quebec even. All over Canada, they go to Vancouver. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but it's a huge mixing pot of uh, native cultures there. So I was talking to the director and I said, what would you like as a, as a, as a motif? And she, he was talking about stuff and I said, okay, the bear, I'm gonna make you a bear, I said. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a medicine wheel on it because you wanna attract these people that need uh, uh, doctoring, like health issues. You wanna attract because native people are shy and they don't like uh, uh, those kind of environments. They don't generally like to go in and get examined or whatever. So this is to, to tell them it's a safe place for their, because that's what they're used to seeing everywhere. So it says home, right? If you're Plains Indian or whatever, you see the medicine where you go, these guys know what they're doing, they're Indians. So that's why I, I put that on there. And also this is for our own coastal people, the grizzly bear. Next. These are just some different style of art. This is a Coast Salish art. Now in Vancouver, the Coast Salish, that's their territory. And up there you can see, you don't see any ovoids. You see some S shapes, but that's really rare. They don't, they don't generally use S shapes. That's not their style. Next. This is a Haida piece. This guy did this with a paint with the uh, spray can. So Vancouver, you get lots of art like this. You get a lot of artists. Next, real bossy. Okay, this I was sketching out. This is a uh, bent box. It's a cedar. I was uh, sketching out because I was going to cut down and then inlay these after. And that's how you do it use shells because they're from uh, the ocean. That's what we had and it's historic, you know? That's what they had for buttons, shells. Next, there's a caribou. My buddy is a caribou clan, so I made a caribou for him. And I used the shells for the eyes. Same with the eagle. And this is a salmon head motif. That's a uh, yellow cedar. That was a huge box, it's, it's big. Next, another view. So if you can see uh, the, the way we get this is we, we use the same sketch, we just flip it over and put it here and uh, then you get a point. These, you, when you're doing this kind of art on, uh, on uh, cedar, if you mess up, that's it. 
you're out of uh, $400 just to get the cedar box made. Okay, next please. This is what I do for a living, paint canvas. This is my backyard here in an apartment. So what I do is I prepare the canvas. I'm just showing you some of my methodology. Next, that's in my apartment. That's the start of uh, some stuff. The reason I use a uh, canvas, it's more versatile. I can drag it over a table and have a straight surface to paint on. Next. There's it starting to take shape. I did this for uh, one of the chiefs. They wanted something for their uh, one of their buildings. So I'm known for doing huge canvases. Next, please. So this is a, uh, I did this for the city of Surrey in Vancouver. So Surrey is another melting pot of uh, native people. And uh, I was contracted to do a 20 footer by, by seven feet. And this is it. So uh, we did an eagle. The reason I did an eagle, because it covers a lot of ground. And a killer whale. And uh, of course, they wanted to address um, um, residential schools. So we did a residential school on there somewhere. So this is about working together as a team, all peoples. So the way we uh, uh, interact with other people is important. We don't want to be too exclusive to the point of uh, excluding everybody. And when you do something like this, you have to have uh, permission from your people to be able to do this kind of stuff. And I had to get permission from my people. And the way to do that is to, you don't formally say, oh, here, uh, can, I, can I paint? No, you, don't, you, you go to the community and you paint. And then if they say no, it's game over. If they, if they like it, yeah, go ahead. That's how you do it. It's, it's strange how uh, native communities are. They don't have a big, a lot of times they don't have a big formal thing where you say, oh, can I paint this and can I paint that? And when they buy it, that's a hell yeah. Okay, next. There's another workshop. Um, what I do for these is I sketch out, then I give them carbon paper, then they... She's a member of uh, the band up in uh, Prince George. And that's not beer, that's some kind of pop. <laughs> Next. I thought this was cool because uh, she's wearing a, uh, what is that on her head called? Hijab? Hijab. And I think that's important for people to know. Everybody is people and we're all valuable. And to see somebody from thousands of miles away and working on this is wonderful. Because that's what we, that's what a lot of people uh, project and how we actually uh, approach people and how we treat them in the real world is important. So that's uh, welcoming her into painting that. Plus, I could use the help. Okay, next. Next. I was showing these guys how to do, uh, this is my, what I do is for big paintings, I project it onto the, whatever my object is. Okay. Okay. There's me doing a, a contract for a, a Synapka Film Fest in Ottawa. That was a lot of work, man. It was boiling hot. And it's harder than it looks because this stuff sops up paint like crazy. Next. That's the first time I used the tape on anything. And it was so-so. Okay, next. That's a frog I did for uh, Prince George. That's one of their uh, clans. They, they, they contracted me to do their, their logos. See my Indian blankets is my place made in uh, Ecuador. Next, 
There's a beautiful beach with all the ships in the back. So my ancestors were coastal people. And they're from the southeast Alaska. And they interacted with the, the Haida, Shimshian, all of the nations up there. And they're primarily fisher people. So I have that in my blood. Next. This is a different kind of a composition I did for somebody. What I wanted to portray was uh, energy, and I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't know how to do it, but I figured it out later. I'll just put red dots for where the art is, and then for the eye there, and then for to even it out, I put the uh, berries there. Next, uh, my partner and I painted this for my mother. Beautiful. We wanted to, she liked Neil Diamond, so we wanted to make the summer swirl like a hot August night. So that's what we did. And she loved it. Next. Next. Well, let's go back. So what do you think of this? I was contracted to do it. I said, what? You want what? Then I was doing research and how, how am I going to make this look good? So I thought symmetry. So I, I uh, made a drawing, then I cut it in half, or I mean, I put it in, on both sides and it did look good. But it's because of symmetry that this managed to survive. And the legs, the skinny little legs, I was wondering how to do them. And for one of the second times I used tape was it's not cheating when you use tape, it just makes it simpler. And it, it took me forever. That's just like, uh, you know, all these rules people make up about life. Well, research them and see how true they are. This is a beautiful piece. This wasn't finished, by the way. It's just, I think I did three drafts of this to get it right. But I got it. And this uh, grouse clan, and these are the people of the clan, this face. And I think that was the last picture we have. Yeah, there are questions. Any questions? Minutes, you have. <laughs> Any questions, anybody? Hey, folks on Zoom, if you wanted to turn on your cameras and uh, your microphones, please feel free to pop in uh, with a question. You can also type that in the chat and we will make sure that Brad sees you. In the meantime, perhaps we can take some in person questions. Anyone here have any questions? Yep. Uh, you, you briefly mentioned you were first a firefighter and then uh, you became an artist and, and if I understand well, through that you reconnected more with, with, with your culture, so it's For sure, I, I, wasn't, I didn't hold my culture valuable. My idea of uh, Native people when I was young growing up was uh, TV. I'm 62, almost missed the two part. <laughs> Um, we had Buffy St. Marie, Jay Silver Eels, we had Jim Thorpe, we had Redbone. When Redbone came out, I thought they were gods. They came out with a come and get your love. <clears throat> then all of a sudden people jumped on the wagon like uh, Robbie Roberts and people like that. It was good. It was great that they could finally be comfortable in saying they were native. But prior to that, we didn't have a lot. So that being said, I didn't uh, think it was important to be uh, cultural or anything like that. I didn't know much about it. Our family didn't, uh, as cultural as they got was actually hunting and fishing, you know, like they didn't do ceremonies and all that. We were brought up with the church. Um, as time went on, our, our 
we had become more cultural. My brother and me and my other brother and uh, our sisters, you know? So it was a learned behavior for us because of our generation that we were in, you know? So it was being free after when you became who you're supposed to be because I'll never be a white guy, ever, no matter what, you know, no matter how I talk. The sad part is I can't uh, uh, talk in Tlingit or Vantatkwichin, and I can't think in it. So no matter how smart I get about my culture, I won't be able to think in Tlingit. You realize how serious that is? Now, other people, they can think in French, Spanish, English. And that's how, you know, they're thinking in those languages. We're thinking in a foreign thought. And they have the language somewhere. But the good thing is it's not over. And young people are learning the language. And my point is I can learn Tlingit at my, my age, but I'm actually thinking in English translating over so i'm not thinking in clinket i'm regurgitating some language but hopefully with the younger kids now that are in immersion and crees have immersion different nations have immersion hopefully in the next generations they will change that and think in their language you know we'll see how it goes because uh <clears throat> old people are going to did that answer your question? Thank you. Thanks. And I have art all over the place here. That's all for sale. I'm a real clinket. <laughs> Thank you for your, your talk and your beautiful music. Um, I have a question concerning your process. Like, I wonder kind of what is your process? Do you, because sometimes you, you paint important beings or things that have to do with sacred stories. And I'm wondering, um, how does that work? Is there specific protocols that you follow to before you paint them? Or did you have to get uh, permission? No. Uh, first of all, I'm clinking, so it gives me automatic permission to do a lot of this stuff. Second of all, I get permission either from the community or from the people that told the story and I pray. Usually I do ceremonies when I'm working. A lot of times uh, when I'm doing work, I'll do ceremony. Sometimes uh, I don't need to do ceremony. I just don't feel it. When you do that sort of a thing, you have to do it and it has to be from your heart. You can't just do it because somebody told me, then it's not me, is it? It's some Yahoo pulling strings and I don't get my strings pulled. Um, but yeah, there's protocol, and I've went through the hoops. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? I, I could ask more about the intercultural thing. You said uh, it's people from other cultures. I don't know which one exactly, more from the east or the plains or yeah. the prairies. So that. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understood My, that chapter. The, peel, but... the people that taught me about uh, the cultures over here, one was Migama, it's Noel Lockwood. The other one was William Commander, who's uh, from Kitigan Zibi. And William and I used to phone every day for 15 years because he mentored me in a lot of ways. We were really close friends. And I didn't say, oh, grandfather, can you phone? I know we were friends, and he advised me. It was mano o mano. And for Noel Knockwood, uh, he saw a young guy and he thought that uh, I was worth talking to. Because if you're going to talk to people about these various serious ways of life, hopefully as they deserve it or that they're really interested. You know what I mean? And he called me a seeker. So when he said that, I didn't get it. But he, he probably meant a seeker of uh, some way of life. And it's a spiritual way of life. These paintings here, they're uh, spiritual, but they're meant to be uplifting. They're not meant to, uh, to be life-changing or anything like that. 
like when I'm back home in the Yukon, people will look at my work and they'll get it because it's automatic, you know. And we're talking about my peers, some heavy duty people. So they order from me, actually. So then you do think, yeah, that uh, what you're saying is that there's enough uh, we share across uh, different nations, across the continent, that you could connect to what like Always, a, an yeah. Anishinaabe leader would tell you. The connection is there that we breathe. Grandfather, sun, grandmother, moon, wind spirit, fire spirit, water spirit, and that's global. So we all have our ways, and uh, that's a good commonality. That's a good way to start. And hopefully we work together as a team and do something about it. There are people that work to work uh, uh, for the environment of whom I'm in touch with, and hopefully they'll get on board with me to do some uh, artwork for them or something like that. I think that's important. I have to do something. It just, I'll tell you what, it just can't be a picture for being pretty or whatever, you know? It has to have some value to it. And I get great value from people when they, when they buy my work. It changes their day. You know, they like it because it's bright or it's cute or even that's lots. It doesn't have to be some heavy duty uh, message of saving the world. It's, how about, oh, I appreciate the sun or I appreciate grandmother moon or the squirrels and the, the uh, hummingbirds or whatever. You know what I mean? Those are very basic things. We have to, uh, uh, or I have to, I'll speak for myself, enjoy this, enjoy the present. Like, I'm from Vancouver, we don't get snow there. But when I was walking in the snow, I said, this is beautiful. People probably thought I was some kind of nut, but uh, you know, when, you, when you're in a different environment, I mean, I'm not gonna move here, but you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's beautiful to be alive and we have to acknowledge that. And that's what I do when I paint or when I write music. Usually when I'm writing a love song, it's to, to uh, tell them something, you know? Like that Plains love song that I wrote, I love that. Uh, when I wrote it, I had Buffy St. Marie's uh, jingle bells in the in the as the intro you know that's why i wrote that song with the drum and that being said thank you for your time and i hope uh, you enjoyed the uh, what i talked about masicho donald cheese now goa Thank you so, so much for joining us. To those of you on Zoom, we are going to go ahead and close this up. We're going to stop the live stream. If you do want to revisit this at any point in time, it is available on the Fourth Space YouTube channel. Thank you again to Brad Henry for sharing this, and uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Thank you.